Hey YouTube, welcome back everyone. Thought I'd do a quick video on my battery packs, um, how they are now, the um, with all the connections on them. Just a very simple video. The next video is going to be on a more detailed one, um, and and kind of the creation, the soldering, and bits and pieces because I haven't really done one yet for that. Um, but this one one here is just to um, catch everyone up where I'm up to, how I've done it, what cable I've cables I've used, which connectors I've used and um, how they're looking. So I'll just zoom in and you can have a look at that. Right, so what I've got here is I've used um, XT60 connectors. So these are rated at 60 amps, hence the XT60 part of it. Um, they're quite a nice little connector to work with. Uh, they can be a bit fiddly trying to fit cables into it. But So what I've done is I've used a 60 amp connector for the positive and for the negative. So they're separated off. Normally you'd have the positive and the negative going into one connector and then obviously vice versa on the other end. So what I've done is I've connected it so that two cables go into it for the positive and two for the negative. That way um, we've got 20, uh, a 50 amps um, rating pretty much on this pack. Uh, the, each of these cables I've used is 25 amp cables. Uh, they, uh, well they are um, cut in two links one connection goes all the way pretty much halfway through the pack the second connection comes through to the very end of the pack um, normally for example you have your bus bar and then you have your connections at the end going off that your positive and your negative for example uh, what the way I've done it is slightly different to that I've left the, these little um, wire oh, um, the, these nickel strips here I haven't cut them off just yet there's a reason I haven't done that yet but I'll come to that later in, uh, in future videos what I've done, is so pretty much uh, this, that means that by using two 12 gauge uh, connections, which are rated at about 25 amps each, that gives us about 50 amps um, possible draw off this with this cable size and with these connectors. Um, now, these, these are 32p. Obviously, if I was going to be drawing one amp off each of these cells, that's 32 amps. So I'm not going to, uh, for starters, I'm not going to need to draw more than 32 amps off a pack, uh, but the cable thickness and the cables and the connectors are fine for, uh, you know, even 30 amps all day. So what I've got here is I've done my, obviously my positive, my negative is pretty much exactly the same. The cable I used is um, split off from a, a dual uh, cable where you kind of get the positive and the negative, so you can split you can pull them apart, uh, which does mean you end up with a bit of a red as well as on the black. However, it just worked out cheaper for me to buy the cables um, in a twin pair than it would be to buy the individual black and the individual red. So that's why I went with that, and that's why you, you see a, a red um, strand down one side of the of the black cable. But that's okay, we know it's black, it's got a black shrink wrap on this side. Um, and it's obviously got the red shrink wrap on, wrap, shrink wrap on this side. Uh, the other thing is what I've done is I've just used a, a long cable tie um, around the whole middle of it just to keep these the ends of these long cables uh, nice and tight so it's nice and tidy. I've also used another type of connector. I forgot what this one here is called actually. Um, it's a, I think it's a JT. These are 100 mil uh, JT cables. And they come in a pack like so. Uh, what I would suggest if I was to do uh, buy some more I would buy these are 100 mils I would buy the 150s or the 200 mils just gives you a bit more room to play with um, as you see it's slightly tight but it's, it's going to be fine for this um, for this bank anyway this means that I'm going to have um, so these are going to be connected in series this one here to this one here um, to the pa uh, to the pack up above and the pack down below so that means um, I can easily just plug in cell monitoring later on um, slash BMS um, it's but yeah so this is just a bit of an overview of how my packs are looking nice and tidy um, now some people might say well you might need thicker cables well my bank or my inverter is going at 2000 watts is going to pull around about 27 amps um, through some just some calculations so normally it won't be pulling 2000 amps but obviously throughout a period of the night or the day it will be drawing uh, 25 to 27 amps so these packs are obviously individually so for this one here this has got to be obviously for the first I'm just going to raise the camera slightly so this is going to be for the first five kilowatts 
So the five kilowatt pack, as you, you start adding more um, banks in there, you obviously, if one bank at five kilowatts um, is gonna draw, let's just say 25 watts, I oh, sorry, 25 amps, that means as soon as you add the next bank of five kilowatts, that halves, and then you add the third bank to get to 15 kilowatts, again, the amperage per bank drops down. So this um, is fine for the first five kilowatts, but it's technically overrated. Um, there's no way I'm gonna need to pull 50 amps. There's no way I'm gonna need to pull 32 amps. Um, it's especially long term. Short term, while we play around with the inverter, while we do some some tests and bits and pieces, um, and we do draw a, quite a bit of power out of um, the inverter just because we've only got five kilowatts plugged in. Um, yeah, we might get to 27 amps, um, but that's still under 32, uh, and it's still under 50 for the um, cables, and it's still under 50, uh, 60 for the connectors. So, because our voltage is much higher, uh, we can get away with using much thinner cabling and uh, much easier plugs to um, to deal with. So nice and tidy. Uh, what I'll do is I'll I'll put all the packs into the um, the power wall, um, and we'll have a quick look at how everything looks when it's all connected up.